All right, in this video, I'm gonna be telling you about all of my favorite hunting knives that I have in my kill kit, which ones I've carried over the years, which ones I've dumped because I don't see the value in carrying them, and I got a couple accessories and a new knife that I'm gonna show you at the very end. So, let's jump into it. This one I actually don't have on hand. It is somewhere in my gear. Havilon knife. This is very common to have a replaceable blade knife. I just have the sheath, no knife inside. I've been using this, I think, since 2013, 2012. A long time. Replaceable knife, blade knives are sharp. They will cut and do the job. It's easy to break those blades. Uh, also, you gotta figure out how to dispose of them when you're um, processing out the field. A lot of times I'll just put them back inside the little um, container that I use to swap out. I do carry the little blade remover when I do carry this knife. But, to be honest with you, I don't carry this one anymore. I like it at camp where I'm in a completely stable environment where I can continue to debone on a flat surface or when I'm at home butchering the meat up, getting all the silver skin off. They're just very sharp and I haven't cut myself fortunately. I've been around other people who've cut themselves. Uh, I was on one hunt and a guy cut himself three times with the hat on. And he's like, ah, whatever, no big deal. He had one right in his leg. You can see where the cut went and uh, blood was coming out. It wasn't bad. Luckily, it was low in the leg. But they're just super sharp. I don't want to cut myself deadly out there in the field. So even though it's a good knife, you can be very effective with it. It's just not my cup of tea anymore. So that one stays home. Let's look at the Gerber knife. I have a Gerber EBS knife. This is the Randy Newberg. I put it in there, so put it off to the side so I wouldn't cut myself. Uh, this thing is sweet, honestly. The ergonomic grip is super smooth. Um, it's lightweight. It actually comes with three different blades, which I like. It has this cool little carrying case that you can use. There's a serrated, there's that long one that I have on there, and then there's like a medium one. So, regular. They're, they're heavy duty. They're not gonna break on you like a, um, like a Havilon. Serrated, I use this a little bit, the serrated one. Uh, I use this the most. I used it on my deer in Utah, and it did amazing, honestly. I took it on this last hunt in Colorado for elk, and it wasn't as sharp as it was. Uh, I think, I should know this doing this video, but I think you can resharpen these. I'm not 100% sure. I think most people would just go and buy a new set. It's not, it's not that expensive, I think, but it's super sharp, like a Havilon, kind of scary but you do got a bigger blade, it's not gonna break on you, and this thing is ergonomic. So, to answer, is it still in my kill kit? I think it depends on the animal. I still like it a lot. It does have this easy, uh, you push down, you're able to take off the blade. Not too bad. Again, that's the Randy Newberg Gerber EBS knife. Uh, outdoor Edge Leduck knife. Um, this is super small, comfortable in your hand. It's a small blade really good for skinning. I really like the uh, ergonomic handle here. Uh, the thing I don't like about it is the blade is too small. It's like two and a half inches. It's tiny. Um, this thing came out of the gate super fast, super, not fast, super sharp. Skinned uh, both of the animals in Colorado with my dad, uh, both deer, and it, it did amazing. Super comfortable, but it's just a short, little stubby uh, blade, so I don't get a huge benefit out of it. I use it around the kitchen nowadays. Doesn't doesn't make the kill kit anymore. It's got a little rusted. I haven't taken good care of it like I should. But the Leduck knife. They actually replaced this with they call it the Pivot now from Outdoor Edge. Again, super sharp. Just I need a little bit longer of a blade. Got the old trusty Buck Light. This knife I've had um, for a long time. I originally got a Buck Light from my dad when I was 12 for my first deer hunt. Uh, it was just his that I was borrowing. Use that for a couple years, then I ended up getting this, I think when I was 14. And I remember counting it up how many animals this thing's gone through. Uh, I think it was north of 19, 17 or 19. Uh, included bighorn sheep, mountain goat, handful of elk, handful of deer, um, maybe even a pronghorn. But this thing, what I love about the buck knife, <clears throat> it holds the edge well. This, this is probably my sharpest knife. Um, when I see how it performs in the field, this is like, this is the one I gravitate to because it just continues to cut um, and does a really good job. The thing that you gotta be careful of is that that point, like it's easy to poke through 
and get a hole in the hide. If you're trying to keep your cape all nice and perfect, you gotta be careful. There's other skinning style knives that will probably do better for you. And for the nostalgic purposes of this knife and its performance, this one stays in my kill kit. Again, that's the Buck knife, uh, Buck Light. We lost my dad's Buck Light on a hunt in 2016, hunting uh, elk. And I have a video where I try to go back and metal detect and find it because we knew exactly where we lost it and I could not find it. Hiked in the snow, hiked a couple miles. I was super hopeful, but spoiler alert, I could not find it. If you want to watch that video, I will have a link to it. All right, this is a Cabela skinning knife. It says stainless. I think it's like their Outfitter series. Uh, very comfortable in your hand. It's thick enough. That it's not. It's not tiny and uh, it fits really good. Uh, I have skinned a lot of animals with this. I have packed this a lot, but this one doesn't keep, stay in the kill kit. It's just a little bit heavy. I got to work to make sure that blade is sharp, sharp. It, it does good, it does stay sharp. Um, just, it's a little bit on the heavy side. Comfort side, I'd give it an eight to nine. <clears throat> it's super comfortable. This is one that I'll have, like I'll sharpen it up and let uh, Spencer, my son, use it at the house when we're processing animals and doing the at-home butchering. Really good knife. This one just kind of stays at home though. This is the Argali Carbon Knife. Used this since 2019. Really good blade, really good setup. Uh, let me just talk about this for a second here. It, it does have a really nice tacky handle. Honestly, it's pretty tacky out of the gate. It's smoother now. It's not like it's smooth, but uh, it, it's worn to where it's more comfortable for me. When I used it on my first elk, I was kind of wrapped too hard on it and I didn't have gloves. I was just going, I don't think I, pretty sure I didn't have gloves. Going to town, I got a little rubbed raw on, on uh, my index just because I was kind of holding it not the best. You can always put your finger on top, uh, a lot of different options, but it's ergonomic, it's lightweight. Uh, the blade does keep a good edge, does a great job, and this one stays in the kill kit. I can count on this and I, I'll bounce between that and the buck knife. I'm always, I'm always tinkering around and seeing which, which style I like more. So it's the Argali Carbon. The one that is brand new for 2024 is the Argali Sawtooth. This is a good knife. It's very, very comparable to the, um, the handle is comparable to the Carbon, but definitely has a different blade style. I'll probably do a video on these two separately just to talk about the differences and what I like and all that. Uh, but this is ergonomic. A little, bit long, a little bit longer blade. Could be really good for butchering at the home. Good for in the field if you like that longer longer blade than uh, the, the carbon. Just, just a little bit longer, I guess, if you put them tail to tail right there. And uh, a little bit heavier, 2.3 2 ounces, which is still super lightweight. Have not used this in the field yet. I've used it here in the house, cutting up apples and some steak and some basic stuff. I haven't used it in the field, but if it performs as well as this one, which I'm sure it will, I think it'll be great. So that'll be new for 2024. We'll give it a shot this year. Those are the main knives. I'm going to talk about two accessories that I always have in my kill kit also, which is the uh, F, I think it's uh, 180, Silky Saw. This thing has been through so many animals, so many legs and heads. <laughs> and it'll just do the job for you and, and get through. Um, I like it because it has a rubberized grip and It'll lock into place. You just push that, bring it back down. It does the job. I also like to have a little knife sharpener inside my kill kit. This is the WorkSharp pocket sharpener. Uh, I will use this and just touch it up as I go if I if I see the need to. Um, and it's something that is not very heavy and will do a good job. So that's kind of my, that is my take on the knives that I carry in my kill kits. The ones that. Uh, I really like because that Argali Carbon Knife, that Buck Light, and those are like basically my staples. Those two will stay in there. This thing, you need to get one of these in your hand to see how they feel. Super comfortable. It's rubberized, ergonomic, um, but you, gotta, you do not have to change up the blades. is isn't a huge deal. Also, I didn't, I didn't call it out, but the, uh, the knife, you have it all, all together. So you got your blades in here and the knife. So pretty cool setup, pretty innovative, and uh, it works well. 
All right, so that's the rundown of some of my favorite knives. The ones I've used, the ones that I've kind of set to the side and still keep using in my kill kit. Uh, let me know in the comments what your favorite knife is and why, and why you use it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Later. It's like it exited right. Oh. <laughs> Little Steve. Exited right in front of his shoulder. <laughs>